hello everyone welcome back again to my youtube channel so in today's video we are going to be seeing how to cut a 360 degree flare and also how to add a printer line to it to make the flare stand like so and if this sounds like something you are interested in i will say keep on watching and if you are still here to subscribe to the channel please hit on that subscribe button and let's get started <music> So guys, to cut any flare, you must fold your fabric into four. So that's what I've done here. This was the first fold, which is into two, like this. And then I folded again to give me four fold, okay? Now we are going to be taking our measurements. So now we are going to be taking our measurement from this point that doesn't have any cuts when you fold your fabric. You will notice there is a point that is just folded that doesn't have any cuts. So that's where you are going to take your measurement from, okay? The length of the flare and the amount of fabric you are going to fold, it depends on where you intend to place the flare. And I want this particular one, I intend to place this particular one underneath a top I'm making. So it's going to end up being a peplum top, okay? So the flare is going to be underneath it like this now the full length i want this top to be is actually 22 inches by the time i'm done and i already have 15 inches for the upper part now this flare is going to be 15 inches minus 22 inches which, which give me seven inches so that seven inches is going to be the length of my flare okay and i've took measurement for the side of this fold and what i have there is about 10 inches and that should be enough for the length of my flare okay and now for the measurement around my waist because this flare is going to be starting around my waist the waist measurement i'm working with divided by four gave me six inches so i'm going to place that six inches point with my tape to make a curve and i've decided that this flare i want it to be enough for me to be able to form some pleats so instead of using my client actual waist measurement divided by four which is six inches i have decided to make this curve to be eight inches that is going to be bigger than my actual waist measurement okay so i'm just going to make a curve like so and i'm going to mark a new point there after making the curve and check if i have if what i have there is actually the inches i want so after checking that i'm going to make a point there as you can see so from that 8 inches point I made earlier, I'm going to take a measurement towards the middle point and what I have is about 6 inches. So that 6 inches is what I'm going to use to make a curve around this upper area. So I'm making sure that 6 inches is what I'm using to make a curve, okay? So that's how you are going to do it. So this curve area I marked is going to be my waist area. So I'm just trying to, I'm just going to be placing my tape like so as you can see so i'm just going to make a curve round there to like get to the end point so after i'm done correcting the curve i'm going to measure that area to see how many inches i have there and that gave me about eight and a half because this fabric is folded into four eight and a half into four places is going to give me 34 inches so that's extra 10 inches added to my client waist measurement which is 12 inches okay now from this line i just corrected now so i'm going to make a curve round there so now from this new line that I just corrected now, which is my waistline, I'll be coming down by the length I want this flare to be. Now we are going to determine the length of this flare and I want this flare to be about 7 inches long. I'm actually marking it out now at 8 inches. So the extra 1 inch is going to be for me to join the piece together and for me to add my lining. Notice that I'm taking this particular measurement from this curve area at my waistline. Please don't make any mistake of starting this um, at the top area, okay? So I'm marking it to be 8 inches long. Like I said earlier, this is going to be the length of my flare. So I'm done tracing that out and remember the upper line is the waistline and the down line is the end of my fabric, okay? So I will go ahead now and cut out my fabric. So guys, this is what my flare is looking like after I'm done cutting. Now remember we folded our fabric into four and by the time I'm done opening it up, it's going to actually look like so. Before I open it up fully, I'm going to use the one I have here to cut out my lining and I'm using the same fabric 
uh, for my lining as requested from my clients okay and for the lining i folded that into four like we did earlier when we are cutting the actual fabric and i'm going to place my actual fabric on it like this and make sure when you are placing it you are placing this properly okay and after that you can go ahead to pin it down just to give it stability so by the time you are cutting it out it's not going to move around okay so i'm just trying to place it properly before i cut it out okay so after that i'll go ahead and cut it out guys this is the actual fabric and the lining both are now cut out so when you open everything up fully you will see it's like a full circle can you see what i have here so it's the same thing i have on the lining piece as well so at this point you can go ahead to hang on and hair stay to the back of your lining if you have an stay and also add it to the wrong side of your actual fabric and that will give your fabric stability but i ran out of hair stay in shop that's why i'm not adding it to mine okay so we still have a full circle here so i will go ahead now and open up the side for both actual fabric and also the lining so we will be able to join this piece together okay so guys after opening up the close part this is what my fabric is looking like so after that i'm going to start arranging my fabric on my table like so i'm going to place them on each other right side facing each other and after that you can go ahead to pin down your fabric and make sure one side is no longer than the other okay so after that i'm going to use my crino line so I'm going to be sewing my crinoline along with my fabric on the sewing machine and to know the amount of the crinoline you will need and that depends on the uh, amount of the fabric you are working with okay and the crinoline usually comes with the rough edges and it can actually make you feel uncomfortable when you wear it so I'm going to be sealing that area up with a fabric some piece of fabric okay and when i'm done sealing that up i'm going to show you guys how it looks like so now on the sewing machine when i'm stitching the two pieces together i'm going to be placing my crino line like this on the lining parts and i will also stitch it along with them when i'm sewing so so this is what it looks like on the sewing machine and i've gone ahead to stitch up the rough parts and i'm going to place it on my lining parts which is the part that is actually facing me now and i'm stitching all the pieces three pieces together and we have the actual fabric the lining and also the crino line but the crino line make sure it's on the lining part so i'm going to stitch down everything all the way till you get to the other end okay <music> I just want to show you guys how I finish up my crinoline rough edge the other time. So I'm going to be using this piece of fabric to cover it up and stitch it down. And once you are through with that, you continue with the process and just finish everything up, okay? <music> So guys, after sewing, this is what we have and you can see how this is looking and the next thing we are going to do now is to make a top stitch. So you will need to stop stitch all the stitching allowances that we have here towards the lining. So this is what I'm showing us right here. So you are going to top stitch all you have towards the lining, all the sewing allowances we have inside here towards the lining. You can see how I push them towards the lining like this. It's not going to be easy, but you just have to force it and sew it towards the lining. So you are going to sew it facing the lining, okay? And make a top stitch. So this is how you are going to do it. So you are going to sew it all around till you get to the end part. So you are going to force it and make sure the um, allowances are facing the lining and you are going to top stitch it all around till you get it to the end part, okay? So guys, I'm done stitching it now. You can see how it's looking like even before we go ahead to iron it. So at this point, you can go ahead to iron it out. And all the crino line and all the stitching allowance has been pushed towards the lining side. And you can see how everything is looking neat in front. And, and after this, you can go ahead to iron it out. So I will go over to my body foam and I'm going to style it there. And after styling, I'm going to show you guys how it looks like. And you can see the effect it's giving us already. Even before styling it okay so i'm going to go over to my body foam now and show you guys how it looks like 
So guys, this is what it's looking like on my body foam after pleating. And you can see the standing effect right now. If it is was 720 degree flare, it will stand even more better and fuller than this. This is a 360 degree flare and this is why it's looking like this. But this is still um, having a standing effect and this is what crinoline does to your fabric when you had it, okay? And thanks so much for watching up to this moment, guys. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please kindly hit on that subscribe button to be part of my sewing family and don't forget to share and like this video and comment that sweet words okay and i'm going to see you in my next one bye guys